Hello, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're tuning in from. You're listening to Ixia Shows, Episode 2 on the Collaborative Review feature. This is a webinar exclusively about IxiaSoft CCMS, its new features and functionalities, best practices, and how-tos. The Ixia Shows concept was developed as a collaboration between IxiaSoft's product and marketing teams. Each episode will focus on a new element of the CCMS and feature an in-depth demo so you can get a feel for the software. At the end of each presentation, we'll open up the floor for questions. My name is Sydney Jones, and I will be your host today. I'm the Head of Marketing Communications at IxiaSoft. So before we start, uh, you should just know that this presentation is being recorded, and we will send this recording to anyone who signed up for the webinar after it airs. It will also be available on our website. I mentioned that there will be a Q&A session at the end of the webinar, so if you come up with a question at any point during the presentation, you can type this into the control panel and we will answer these at the end of the webinar. So another thing too, uh, we really like to hear where our listeners are tuning in from, especially now that we are all, for the most part, working from home. So at any point during the webinar, feel free to just write in, say hello from Germany or hello from Japan, wherever it is that you're working, we would love to hear from you, so feel free to give us a shout out. So grab a chair, get comfortable, and enjoy the show. Um, I would like to introduce to everyone our guest, Sharon Figuera. Hi, everyone. Uh, so uh, thanks for tuning in today. My name is Sharon Figuera. I'm based on a little island called Cortez Island, and it's near Vancouver in British Columbia. Uh, until I joined Ixiosoft three years ago, I worked for about 20 years in the tech pubs domain first as a technical writer, then as a line manager, and then as a project manager at companies like uh, Redback, Kodak, Ericsson, and HCL. Going on to the agenda, we'll have a quick look at what we're going to do today. Who and what is Ixiosoft and Ixiosoft CCMS? And then I'm going to do a demo uh, focused on our Ixiosoft CCMS collaborative review feature. Uh, we'll have uh, some questions and then we're going to get an overview on the next session of uh, Ixia Shows. Thank you, Sharon. So just before we dive in here, we do have a hello from India. So thank you for tuning in. Ooh. So to give you a little background on Ixiasoft before I let Sharon take over, for those of you who don't know who we are, Ixiasoft was launched in 1998 and for over 20 years we have been focused on developing XML-based technologies more specifically, the Ixisoft CCMS since 2006. Now, since the very beginning, the CCMS was developed specifically to manage data components and to be able to scale and support large deployments. Today, we have a world-class leading solution that allows organizations to produce, manage, and publish technical content. Ixisoft is dedicated to driving the evolution and growth of data. We're an active sponsor of the Oasis Data TC, and we have employees who are members, which allows us to closely follow and contribute to the evolution of the standard. Now, a little bit more about Ixiosoft. Uh, we have a global presence with teams in North America, Europe, and Japan, as well as a global customer base. The majority of our customers are in North America, but we are seeing a strong growth in Europe and Japan as well. It's important to note that Ixisoft works with organizations who are industry leaders in their fields. We mentioned it before, the CCMS was designed with scalability in mind. The majority of our customers reach over 1 billion in annual revenue, including companies like SAP, ADP, Workday, Ericsson, Qualcomm, and MasterCard. To give you an example, SAP generates 60,000 deliverables daily and Ericsson approximately 500 users in the system every day. Just so you know, in addition to supporting large businesses, we also have customers with smaller teams with as little as five or 10 writers who face the same challenges as the larger companies. So don't be scared. Uh, Ixisoft supports businesses of all sizes. So back to you, Sharon, take it away. Thanks. Okay, so let's take a step back and try and characterize the many ways in which review can be bad. So firstly, it's missing, it doesn't turn up at all. Uh, and then not meaningful. So this is where you get a very cursory comment, like it looks fine to me or okay by me, or you know, worse, uh, this is not right. Uh, untimely, so uh, it comes in too late to be useful, or it comes in very late and it's critical and you end up doing major rewrites close to the deadline, uh, which of course introduces its own risks. 
uh, or maybe uh, you're forced to ask for a delay to the release, which is uh, an option that's not really available to many tech pubs uh, managers. Not the feedback you're looking for. So here, you know, it might be a language edit where you really need uh, technical input. Perhaps you're writing about something like medical devices, telecommunications, you need that SME uh, input. Uh, and instead, what you get is somebody goes through and sort of corrects all your commas or something. Um, at the other end of the scale, you've got people who come up with a complete rethink of all documentation, you know, so they say something like, let's stop doing documentation and put it all on YouTube. Uh, and, uh, you know, you have to try and manage that. Not the right focus. So here, what I mean by that is that uh, you get folks who they work hard, but they work on unchanged content. They work on content that somebody else has already reviewed. Uh, they work on content that, uh, you know, is not in scope for the review and untraceable. So you may get uh, great review input, really good SME partnership, but you can't find it. So uh, here I've got horrible memories of um, having all my review content, all my marked up PDFs, printed out emails, notes that I made uh, from, from discussions and putting them in um, filing cabinets and then, you know, going through it and trying to find what caused a doc bug or an error. So that's uh, a quick look at bad review. So uh, going on to the next slide, how bad can it get? So I've just picked out a couple of examples. There's quite a few, actually, if you look for them. Uh, the first one is the Mars Climate Orbiter, and this was uh, a disaster which lost 125 million USD. So in 1999, uh, the NASA Mars Climate Orbiter burned up in the atmosphere. And what happened was that uh, the there was two pieces of software that had to control um, the th thrust force. Uh, one was uh, using uh, English measurements, so pounds of force, uh, and the other piece of software took that data in, assuming it was in uh, metric units or newtons, which to me is the sort of classic thing that a tech writer would check on. You know, the the what what are your uh, what are you measuring in? The second one, Ocos Dairy. So this is uh, a very good article that Mary Norris wrote in the New Yorker. So if we look at Maine state law, workers are not entitled to overtime pay for the following activities, the canning, processing, preserving, freezing, drying, marketing, storing, packing for shipment or distribution of the following products. So um, the issue here is that um, because there is no comma after ship it, shipment, the packing for shipment or distribution is a single activity and truck drivers do not pack food either for shipment or distribution they just drive the trucks so these exemptions did not apply to the drivers and Oakhurst Dairy owed them some 10 million dollars so there's some extreme examples of uh, what bad review can cost in the end uh, it's a well sort of documented um, fact that the later you detect an error, the more expensive it gets. So the first graph here is uh, from Ginny Reddish, uh, sorry, the first graphic, and it's it's quite old. So, you know, you have to look at the dollars and, and put them into today's dollars, but the ratios, I think, uh, um, hold good. So, you know, if you find it in the edit cycle and you say that is a ratio of one, then uh, if you find it in the beta testing um, phase, then it'll go up to more than two and a half times as much. But once it gets into the field, you've got um, a factor of 25 times the cost of finding it early. And you can see in the other uh, graphics here, you know, basically it's uh, it costs more and more uh, the later in the phase that you find it until it really jumps up high uh, in the final phase. And uh, the last graph is uh, is showing a similarly sort of pyramid factor there of um, the exponential cost of detecting errors. All right, so uh, what are the obstacles to good review? So, you know, we, we ask our um, reviewers uh, to, to work with difficult formats, interfaces or tools. And even when we give them a PDF, sometimes we ask reviewers to navigate through folders in a repository or a flat file system uh, or some other repo and, uh, you know, they end up in the wrong place or we give them a link and it turns out they don't have access to that area or, or, or some such uh, issue. Uh, 
collaborators, uh, our partners generally have another prime primary job, uh, the one that they are assessed on in their performance review, uh, and they very often have very little time for review. So, you know, sometimes the task is completed at the last moment, perhaps on a Sunday evening, three weeks after you sent your very timely instructions. And so things can go wrong here. It's easy to overlook that the writer has resent a new PDF with a new version and new instructions, uh, and uh, and you know you can you can get into a bit of a mess there. Uh, you get good effort, but it's misplaced. You know it's on the old or out of scope content. Uh, you know um, you you send it to somebody saying very specifically just do pages two to seven and chapter 12 or something, or only do the parts of the of the uh, documentation that, you know, is your specific area of expertise, but instead you get somebody who goes through the entire PDF pages, you know, one to 200. Very often, you know, it's always the docs team neck on the line, really, but, and that, you know, very often you really do rely on your collaborators for uh, the technical review, uh, but they're not accountable. When there are mistakes so you know eventually you can get into a situation where uh, it doesn't really matter you know that uh, if it's uh, not very good review because there's never any follow-up uh, the cost of error fixing it's if you don't have the data if you can't find out why or when an error was introduced or a correction was missed it's very hard to calculate the cost of that fix uh, and you know this is um you, you have to have the, the data at your fingertips as a tech, tech pubs manager to be able to uh, express the exponential cost of error correction. So how does collaborative, our collaborative review um, tool help reviewers? So firstly, uh, it's very low barrier. You don't have to understand data or structured authoring to, to use collaborative review. It's really easy to find the content that's been assigned to you. Uh, and it's really easy to uh, understand your deadlines. Um, you can focus your limited resources, the limited time of your reviewers on the key content. It's, it's really easy to put only the content in scope for review in front of the reviewer. And you have the data to hold reviewers accountable. You can track what was reviewed, by who, when, because every check-in to every object in the CCMS is recorded with the date and timestamp and the name of the person changing the content. And all this data helps you analyze bugs. Uh, so you can do root cause analysis, ask some tough questions about what went wrong, and you can provide reviewers as a, as a cause for bugs and start to make this transparent to senior management. We also offer an approval process. Uh, so this is um, a, a separate process. It has a distinct artifact, so you don't have any loose ends. And I like this because it gets you away from that situation where you do a final review and everything's good, but you'll have uh, a few reviewers will say, if you fix this and you fix that, then it's good. And that's where you, know, you can uh, end up with an error being introduced. So you've got even more transparency. You've got that final artifact, which says this was signed off. So before we dive into the demo, I've just got one uh, reminder here. So um, really, you know, um, Ixiosoft, we support the process through drafting, uh, through a first review, which we call edit review, through to the collaborative review approval and a ready state. Uh, so, you know, in the last uh, Ixia show, I, I went through this, but just a quick reminder. So you can use um, track changes to mark new and change content for your SMEs. You can track the reviews in the sidebar. So you can see in the sidebar here, we've got a discussion going on between me and my SME. Um, you can filter and search on those review comments. So you can look for just the comments that Sharon made or just the comments that Lee made. You can use dates. You can use keywords, you know, look just for security or, or, or whatever in the, uh, and search those review comments. You've got a complete uh, history there. Um, and then you can push your content through an approved workflow by uh, clicking the move button and that will push it through to the next uh, stage in the workflow. Um, all the changes are recorded for in the system for uh, traceability. So what we're going to be looking at is a stage after you've gone through a sort of a drafting process with your uh, SME, and we're going to be looking at collaborative review. 
So uh, I'm now going to jump into my screen. So um, uh, can you see my screen? Good to go. Okay, great. So um, here we are uh, at the sign-in screen. Um, now, you could, you perhaps uh, you would use this uh, uh, the link here to go and look at what was assigned to you, or you can get an email telling you you've got some review that's been assigned to you, or um, you can put in more notifications so that your reviewers are reminded of deadlines as they approach, or they can just browse to their to their list. So let's sign in and have a look. So, you know, this is basically a sort of a dashboard of everything that is that I am responsible for right now. Uh, you can see that you have uh, different kinds of icons. This is our collaborative review. If I just roll over it, it tells me it's a collaborative review. So if it's the first time I'm logging in, uh, it's easy to find. It's got a different kind of button there to tell me that uh, that's what that is. Um, you can't mislay this review. You can't overlook it. It's right there when you log in. Uh, and again, you can enhance this by using notifications to remind your SMEs, you know, that they've got a task assigned or an approaching deadline. Uh, so just a, a quick reminder of this very easy to use intuitive uh, interface. Um, so you've got these icons down here that are telling you about the different kinds of items that are on your um, assignment list. Uh, we've got some context here. So if I, if I jump into my my context, uh, you can see that uh, for my collaborative review, and I know it's collaborative review because it's got an icon and a, and a role over there, but I can see there are three reviewers assigned, so I can click there and find out who they are, okay? And uh, I can also see that uh, there's already 11 annotations on my collaborative review. So um, uh, I, I also have, uh, um, I can see the, work, uh, the workflow phase that all of my content is in uh, and I can filter down in any of these areas so I could filter down to a certain object or I can filter to just show a specific uh, workflow phase so I might decide I'm just going to work on my uh, review stuff today or my work stuff and I can also organize by date so I can you know organize it in the in the order of um, the most urgent stuff which was definitely how I would work as a technical writer uh, so um, another thing, just quickly, you can just quickly see here, there's a, a green padlock on this topic here that's telling me that it's checked out by me. If it's checked out by somebody else, it's a red padlock. Uh, we also have uh, bookmarks, so you can very quickly jump to something that you're working on. Uh, and I can organize these with um, folders so that I can, uh, you know, if I have a lot of bookmarks, I can, I can work on those uh, in a way that makes sense. Um, finally, uh, at the end here, we have our simple buttons, move, that's pushing the content on in uh, the workflow. So however that is set up for you, uh, it may go from review to edit or from review to publish. It, uh, it's completely uh, up to the customer. Edit, so that's to help us jump, that just gets you in and editing the content. And then uh, we have um, uh, dependencies view. So I'm just gonna jump in and show you that. Whoops. Uh, so you can see I'm just looking at this topic. It's telling me that this topic is referenced by this map. Uh, I can also jump in and look at the references. So I can see that this topic references this graphic. And then I can just move around and look at um, what does that image reference. And I can see that, so this image is referenced by all these different uh, topics here. So you get a, a really good 360 view just by clicking on the dependencies there. That's a quick reminder of our um, interface, and I'm just going to uh, just filter down into collaborative review so we can focus on that and jump in there. So I just click on, on there to get in to my uh, collaborative review. Now, um, just to uh, emphasize here that uh, when you create the collaborative review, so it's, uh, it's an artifact that uh, you can see it's a, a single document it's not chunked into topics I'm just I can just scroll through the entire document like that and um, in uh, the, the content owner creates the uh, collaborative review in my scenario that's uh, today that's the writer so when the writer creates this um, 
the writer can see which topics haven't changed since the last review uh, because you can look at the workflow status of all the topics. So you can exclude um, content which hasn't changed from the review uh, and build the review with only the new and changed topics. You can also uh, use uh, variable output to um, uh, build your collaborative review. So, you know, for example, if you have two flavors of a product and uh, you're just, uh, you have a variable output for the, the document, then you can deliver flavor one to the flavor one experts for review, and you can deliver flavor two to the flavor two experts for review. Um, so the reviewers don't have to pick through the content working out which parts uh, need their expertise. And to create uh, that variable review option, you just use uh, uh, any data file that you're using in the system. So, you know, in short, you can remove as much as you possibly can between the reviewer and what you need reviewed. So it's really easy to move around in the review itself. So you can see I've got, uh, uh, I can, Look at the table of contents. You know, I can kind of manually toggle them open or closed, or I can use this to open all the hierarchies. Uh, I can just jump to, you know, a comment. So I'm just clicking on this comment to jump down into these comments. Um, I can uh, uh, I can see everybody who's commenting. And the key thing here is, you know, just to emphasise, there's only one instance of this review it's not a pdf that's been sent out to nine people or um you know everybody's taken a copy from a repository everyone's working on a single version and so you can see uh each other's comments so you know the benefits here just to emphasize if it's been reviewed efforts not duplicated if it's missing it's easy to add and if errors are being introduced uh the other reviewers can correct them efficiently and in real time. And if there's a disagreement, then um, reviewers can collaborate to get to the right answer efficiently in real time. This is a, a great improvement on, you know, um, getting your nine PDFs back and you've got uh, some areas where there's a lot of disagreement and you have to get people together uh, to discuss that. So it's uh, very easy to make a comment. So uh, I'm going to make a comment. I'm just going to grab some text like this and it's gonna pop up and I can just create that annotation. So I can say something like, remove this section, save that, and it will pop up there. Uh, I can, I can, you know, think about this and think, oh, actually that's, uh, 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 that's not quite right. I can, I can change um, the content that I've, uh, that I've put in there, or I can decide, you know, I'm just going to delete this. So I can just delete it and it will disappear. I can't do that with other people's comments, so I can't delete or, or change uh, my review companion, Lee. I can't change her comments, but I can reply to it. So I'm gonna to reply to it and say, thanks. And I, when I save that, and uh, I'm now going to, you know, just log in as Lee so you can see the comment that I just made and how that appears to her. So I'm gonna open up that collab review and I'm going to scroll down and you can see there's the comment I just made uh, on September the 15th so um, so this is happening you know it's collaborative review it's happening in real time it's concurrent review uh, I mean uh, just to be a, a very precise you know it's really happening at the refresh rate of your of your page so uh, uh, if you have your reviewers are working together uh, in the same time, then they're going to be able to have a sort of a back and forth there. Uh, yeah, so um, so there we go. Uh, just moving on a little bit. Um, so, you know, you gather in all of your review comments like this, and then at a certain point, you're going to be uh, done. So you're just using the same process, the move button here, and it's moving it along in the um, in the cycle. So uh, I can just mark that as finished. And if I look in the details here, you know, firstly, I can see my other reviewers, the other reviewers that are working on this, and I can also see what the rule is. So here, the rule that uh, the, the content owner has set is that it it's marked it will be marked as finished if everyone is finished so um so you can set this up so that you know you could have a majority or a, a single approver uh, a single 
viewer can uh, uh, finish the review. Um, so you have some flexibility there. So I'm just going to move that now because I'm done. And you can see it's been moved and it's uh, disappeared out of my um, uh, workflow here. So uh, just um, to sort of wrap up a little bit here, um, once all of these review comments have been taken in, then I can move on to the next phase, uh, which would be approval. So we'll have a look at that shortly, but just a, a quick uh, mention of what happens with these comments. So um, right now, uh, you're, the, the content owner will take these comments in in the desktop. They will click on the comment and the comment will, and, and the system will open up the uh, target topic and check it out. Uh, and you can uh, use arrows to go through all the comments and move from comment to comment in the topic and make sure that those comments are taken in. Reminder that as you check in that topic, uh, the system keeps a record of what happened. It, it tells you which user checked out that, co that topic, uh, um, which user uh, uh, made changes, a uh, date and a timestamp, and an optional user comment. So you can put in, you know, I, I took in these comments or whatever. You, you also have uh, visibility if you compare the checked in topic with the changes taken in with the previous version of the topic and you can do a compare there. Now that's all coming in our next release uh, which is 6.3 uh, so that uh, um, you'll be able to do that in the web uh, at that time. Uh, so let's uh, have a quick look at approval. So if I go back to my assignments page and now I'm going to look at uh, all of the content which is assigned to me and I can uh, see my approval there because it's got this I uh, or I can just filter down to approvals uh, as well like that. But let's jump in there. So you can see it's very similar to the collaborative review um, but there's no way to annotate it and essentially what you're doing here is uh, all of the, um, the drafting process is done gone through that first edit review process with the SME where we're pushing content backwards and forwards between uh, writers and reviewers. Then we've had the collaborative review where everybody that's involved in the document has had a chance to make their final comments. The writer's taken the, those comments in. So now all we're going to do is we're going to accept or reject that. So as, uh, as an approver, I get to approve the document or reject it. It's either right or it's not right. Again, uh, what you can do is set this up so that uh, if you can have um, a majority approval, uh, a single person approve, um, or you, you have to have a unanimous approval. So uh, that's how that works. Okay, so that is pretty much uh, it for my um, uh, demo here. So let's just go back to the summary. All right, thank you, Sharon. There you go. So um, how to overcome the barriers to good reviews. So the first thing is support your reviewers with easy to use tools, a clear process and task context. Don't make it hard for them and uh, give them uh, an intuitive interface uh, like the one that I've just shown you, a dashboard of tasks, helpful notifications to keep people on track in uh, their busy life and their, often their focus on uh, another job entirely. Target that review content, focus the right reviewer on the right content at the right time, and you know, um, use uh, what you can to, to use reviewers' time sparingly. Hold your reviewers accountable. Gather data on the process uh, so that you can do root cause analysis of what causes bugs. Um, I think you know, when there are consequences, when people see that uh, their, their rushed review or something that they missed um, caused a doc bug, then um, that really helps to get people to engage with the process. Promote transparency, actively support collaboration, uh, make the discussion visible, uh, and uh, you know, you've got a complete record of what happens with each comment and correction. Use our distinct approval phase to ensure that all loose ends are wrapped, bring in that extra layer of uh, rigor there, uh, and increase your traceability so that you can just pick up those tentacles of uh, how a bug or an error got into your documentation uh, with the data that the Ixiosoft CCMS provides to help you improve that review process. 
And finally, when you've got all this data, communicate the value of the documentation and the cost of errors and uh, to, to help support continuous improvement. So that's it from me. Thank you, Sharon. So it looks like we've got lots of questions coming in. Again, just a reminder that you can type these in to the control panel and we will try to answer as many as we can. So our first question is, um, we have Eric from Switzerland. So hello from Switzerland. Sharon, what happens with the annotations after the information product is released? Do they stay with the topics? So the, uh, the annotations, um, are stored in the artifact which is the collaborative review so you keep that um, artifact in the uh, in the system and you can keep it as long as you want or you can you can get rid of it so it, it basically stays there uh, until you remove that artifact um, the the what you did with the annotations so you know um, if you uh, open you will open up a topic or the system will open that topic for you and you'll take in the changes uh, looking at the artifact so you know you'll change a value or whatever and then you can make a comment saying that you changed the topic uh, that you changed a value or you took in comments from a certain review or whatever and that will stay with the topic um, for a more granular understanding of what happened uh, after the collaborative review you can also compare any object in the CCMS with a previous revision. So you can uh, look at the topic as it was before the collaborative review and you can look at it uh, as it was after the review to, and you get a, a diff showing you uh, what happened there. So you have um, uh, basically uh, a full spectrum of information to understand what comment was made, who made it, uh, how it was handled after that. Okay, so our next question is, in addition to comments, are there any other annotations such as strikeout, replacing text, and text box? That is what we support in uh, the edit review phase. So, you know, as you're working with your SMEs to get to a collaborative review, then you have um, all, of the, uh, all of the things you mentioned there to um, uh, mark up the content. But uh, once you get to collaborative review, uh, it's not that's not an editable artifact. And the idea is that, that this is at a phase of the review where you no longer want content to be changed. It's, it's not a time for people to be going in and you know, uh, rewriting the documentation. So um, all of that has happened in the edit review phase. And at this point, you know, it's, a, it's a final review. Um, you're going to, you know, it's, it's a way of doing that last uh, catch. Um, if you embark on a big edit at this point, you know, you're very likely to introduce new errors. You, you know, somebody goes through and makes a, a whole bunch of changes and then you've got to re-release the collaborative review in order to uh, get that final review. So, you know, the edit review is the phase that supports um, uh, actually modifying and changing the content that your SMEs can do that quite freely. Uh, but at this point, that phase is, is over. All right, so our next question is, is the view of the review content similar in the desktop version? Uh, the, the, so the collaborative review is, uh, is, you can look at it in the desktop version, but it, it's quite, it's not the same at all. It's not as interactive. Um, the, the web client uh, collaborative review is, um, is where you know that it's the full features are supported you can see all of the comments that have been made via collaborative review but it, it doesn't have the same sort of interactive interactive uh, uh, function okay so that looks like it's that's it for questions Sharon um, thank you so much for joining us today for this presentation thank you that was fun good and so um, that's it for the questions before we wrap up, we just wanted to ask you, our listeners, for a quick favor. Uh, this is a relatively new webinar series, so we want to know what you think. Once the webinar is over, it will be great if you could just answer a quick survey that we're sending out uh, along with the recording. So to get in touch with Sharon, um, you can reach her at sharon.figuera at ixiasoft.com. And that's it for episode two. So for episode three, we will be discussing dynamic release management or the branch and merge feature within the Ixiasoft CCMS on November 19th. So thank you everyone and we'll talk soon.